Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Boxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at a very cost effective Wi Fi 6E PCI Express network card which you can add to your computer that doesn't have Wi Fi already, or maybe you've got an older motherboard which has kind of a, a Wi Fi 5 or something pretty shockingly bad, and you're not getting the best signal. Now, this is a card from the people over at Mercusys. Now, Mercusys, if you've not heard of it as a brand, this is basically a sub brand of TP Link which uh, for many people in the industry and for us here in the UK, we've been aware of this brand for a long time and it's a tried and trusted brand. Now in order for TP-Link to offer some of their products at a slightly cheaper price, they've come up with the Mercusys branding and they do all sorts of things that the main TP-Link brand do, such as Wi-Fi adapters, network cards, switches, hubs, routers, mesh systems, all that kind of good stuff. So I strongly suggest you check them out if you want to save a few quid. But that's not what we're here to do today. We are actually here to add Wi-Fi to a PC that actually doesn't have any Wi-Fi. So let's take a quick look at this card and see what it's going to offer us. And also we'll discuss the price, which at the moment is pretty decent. You can pick this up, which is a Wi-Fi 6E card for somewhere in the region of about 20 UK pounds. As always, I'll put some affiliated links in the video description so you can check out local pricing in your region. Now something else which is actually really important for this, for those of you that maybe you've already got Wi-Fi, but if you want to add Bluetooth, this is great because it also integrates Bluetooth. So this comes with Bluetooth 5.3 built in. So if you've got a wireless headset or some other devices which use Bluetooth, this is gonna be a great card which can take advantage of both the Bluetooth and also the 2.4, the five gigahertz and six gigahertz band spectrums for Wi-Fi. Some of the cool features of this card, so it will support up to 2.4 gigabit per second on your Wi-Fi, which is excellent. Obviously, you will need to have a router which will support that. So if yours is Wi-Fi 6, you'll be a little bit slower. Wi-Fi 6E, then you should get the best speeds. Also, this, like I said, supports Bluetooth 5.3. We've also got a powerful Wi-Fi chipset. So the chipset itself is actually an Intel chipset, which is always preferable if you're looking at Wi-Fi. Intel chipsets do seem to be the most widely supported and also easy to install because generally the driver is built into both Windows 10 and Windows 11, meaning you don't need to install separate drivers. Also, this supports MU-MIMO, which basically means multiple in and multiple out. So traditionally on kind of older devices, you'd have one antenna, which would be kind of like the incoming signal and one would be the outgoing signal. So yeah, you get the general idea. Whereas now these will support multiple in and multiple out. So you can have one antenna doing multiple things at the same time basically increasing your bandwidth and increasing your speeds. Another nice feature as well, if you are somewhat security minded, this new version actually also supports WPA3, which is the kind of the latest iteration of the WPA standard. Ideally, you wanna be steering well clear of WPA. WPA2 is widely supported, but not quite as secure as WPA3. So if your device supports it, i.e. your router or your mesh, I would strongly suggest turning on WPA3 for that enhanced security. So let's take a quick look at what we actually get in the box. So you get the card itself, which is actually quite nice and quite small. Now this only requires a PCI Express times one slot. So pretty much every motherboard in the last 15 to 20 years will have one of those. So you shouldn't have any issues there whatsoever. In terms of the Bluetooth connectivity, it will need a USB header on your motherboard, so USB 2.0. Pretty much, again, most boards within the last 30 years or so have probably got one of those included, so you shouldn't have too many issues there. Now, that just connects into the back of the card. You've also got a heatsink as well on the chipset to keep things nice and cool, even in the most demanding of gaming sessions or high transfer bandwidth situations where you're transferring loads of files over your network. And the card itself, quite minuscule as well, something which isn't included is a half height adapter would have been nice to see a half height adapter for smaller systems but i guess it is what it is the antenna are actually captive so they're actually in place you can unscrew them or remove them so they are there all the time and also these are high gain antennas so you should get a very good signal regardless where you're placing it of course that's going to depend mostly on where your wi-fi router is able to distribute your wireless signal also, for those of you that might be struggling with drivers, if you're using an older installation of Windows, that does come with a driver CD, and also it comes with some installation guides. But you won't be needing any of that because we're gonna show you how to install this on a PC right now. Okay, so we've taken off the side panel off our PC, and what we're looking for is the PCI Express slots. And in this particular instance, we need a times one slot as a minimum. You can install it into a times four, times eight, or times 16 slot, should you have one available. I'll give you a close up of the slot so you can see what it looks like. On this particular motherboard, our slot is here at the bottom. So this is a PCI Express 
times one slot. So what we're going to need to do is to remove the PCI Express blanking plate from the back side here. So just look at your slot and line up the cover and then you can remove that. Most of these will require either a thumb screw like this one or a screwdriver to remove the screw. So let's go ahead and remove this. Now, if you're planning on using Bluetooth, then you're going to have to connect up your USB connection, which is this one here. So also look on your motherboard and look for the USB headers. On this particular board, we've got two of them just down here. So I'm going to go ahead and install the USB connector. If you look at the USB connector plug, you'll notice one of the points is actually blanked out to give you a key. So it'll only fit in one physical way. So with your USB plug installed, it should look something very much like this. Of course, you can route the cables out the way after, but I find this is easier to do it now whilst it's a little bit clearer in that particular area. So the next bit to do is to actually install the card into the physical slot. Now this is actually a little bit more difficult on this particular model because of the way the antennas are situated. So you do need to actually push the antennas through the back of the system. Let's show you how to do that. So if we grab the card and then fold out the antennas, and then we're going to slot those through where we've removed our PCI Express blanking plate a little bit earlier on, and just push the card all the way through. And then the little gold fingers on the bottom here line up with the slot and push it in. And when it's lined up, you can push it all the way into the motherboard. Sometimes it'll click into place, other times it might not. Then all you need to do is to replace the screw that we took out a little bit earlier. So just lift that up a little bit to line it up and get your screw. And make sure that's nice and tight. After this is done, you can then move the antennas wherever you want to. So they turn around, they're on a swivel and you can aim the antennas to wherever suits for you. You can play around with these a little bit and move them around to see which gets the better signal. Sometimes you may find that having one off to the side and one upright gives you a better signal, but if you play around with them, you should work out what's best. Do make sure that you don't cover up any of your slots or sockets here on the back of your graphics card if you're using one of those to plug in. You can, of course, move those around after should you wish to, but it's probably easier just to make sure that they're out of the way to begin with. So that is pretty much it. All you need to do now is to turn on your system and you should find that Windows will automatically recognize the chipset, especially of new Windows 11 and also Windows 11. If you're on an older system, again, don't forget, you do have that included disc, which is included in the packaging, this little thing here. So you will need a CD drive. Alternatively, you can head over to the Mercusys website and you can download the drivers from there should you need to on a USB stick. So there we go, there is the installation finalized. And don't forget, if you've taken out a PCI Express blanking plate, put it somewhere safe, maybe put it in the box if you're the sort of person that keeps all your boxes or put it into your motherboard box just for safekeeping, just in case you ever change. Now, to address some questions, which I'm probably gonna get asked, why not Wi-Fi 7? Well, Wi-Fi 7 is incredibly expensive still. And also you will need a Wi-Fi 7 router or mesh system to, in order to take advantage of those speeds. So in my mind, I think it's a wasted opportunity and also wasted money, especially if you're putting together a more budget based system, that extra money can go into things like a better graphics card, some more memory, more storage, that kind of thing. Also, for those of you that don't want to use Bluetooth and you have no interest in using Bluetooth technology at all, you don't have to connect up the USB connection. So if you don't want to install that wire, you certainly don't have to. And actually I did find with this particular case, which is the Montec 903 Max Air, there's actually a couple of little cutouts there, which has enabled me to do some very, very clean cable management with the USB cable coming from the card. It's tucked into one slot underneath the back, then back up through. And it looks very, very clean in my opinion. Something else which is gonna be glaringly absent from this particular video is any form of benchmarking purely for the fact that my Wi-Fi mesh system is only Wi-Fi 6, not Wi-Fi 6E. And also this particular room is actually awful for Wi-Fi in general, just because of the amount of studio lights and other electromagnetic interference. So it wouldn't be a fair or consistent benchmark. But certainly feel free to let me know how you get on with this card yourselves. And if you get some really stellar speeds out of it, please do post them in the comments section below. 
Alternatively as well, if you've got any comments or questions on this video or you need to learn more, please feel free to reach out in that comment section or alternatively over on our Discord community, which is completely free to join. Links for that will be in the video description also. I think that's going to wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content of this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.